Welcome to the Out of Ashan podcast. We are discussing a very important topic today. Perversion. What is perversion? The what is the definition we read code for perversion? If you don't mind. It says read Nessie. Cuz I think that that was a um, that's an important place to start. Obviously we, we know growing up we a lot of times they focused on the sexual behavior or desire that is, that says that's considered abnormal or unacceptable but also in the online definition says it's the mm-hmm. alteration of something from its original course meaning or state of distortion corruption of what what is it was first intended to be mm-hmm. perverted so perversion an alteration of something from its original course or original form from its original intent and there's a amazing scripture um, that speaks to that even more specifically, which is found in Psalms 82. And it says that in verse four, deliver the poor and the needy, rid them out of the hand of the wicked. And once again, from this cultural context, we always think of it being physical material or, or money or something that's monetary. Um, and that is one form of being poor but there, there's another angle we want to take at, especially for people within the firstborn community, that poorness can be of the soul and of the mind and of the understanding. Scripture says that my people perish for a lack of knowledge, a knowledge of oneself, a knowledge of their own identity causes uh, a riff of just constant actions and ideas that push us further and further away from our true original intent which is a perversion so it says deliver the poor and the needy rid them out of the hand of the wicked they know not neither will they understand they walk in darkness all the foundations of the earth are out of course then verse 6 says I have said that you are gods little g or created in the image of the most high children of the most high but well, you will die like mere men. Meaning human beings or the firstborn Adam was created a little lower than the angels. So if we had a hierarchy, mm-hmm. you had the, the most high's realm, Satan and his angels got kicked out and became the watchers as Enoch would say, or the fallen, which were, which were under, if you're doing it in a tier system, they were lower than human beings. So that's mm-hmm. why they were always asking, why are you so mindful of them? Why do you, why did you create them? How did you give them power over us? So once Satan got kicked out of that realm in the garden, in the, in the, in the, in the Holy Land or in the land they now call Africa, there was an exchange of spirit and the physical. And Satan was able to trick Eve, able to trick Adam, into falling into his trap as he was trapped or he fell into the the lie of wanting to be the most high got kicked out and then he offered that same perception deception perversion to adam once adam took of it we now entered into this lower state where we have these bodies and we experience what they call death but from the beginning it was not so that's why he kicked them out of the garden because he said you're going to live forever and you'll have these triune beings that would be in error or perverse for a long period of time so now you see the ramifications Mm -hmm. of that pushing through the centuries once again looking at it from an english mindset is still skewed because i'm not viewing it from my natural state we for this amount of time because it was pronounced to us from our forefathers or from our ancestors adam and eve their name could have been something else or could be you know all the names in the scriptures right now have been changed in one way or another so it's it's it's, that's a part of the whole perversion right satan came in and perversified if i can use that term if that's a word made the whole landscape perverse as we see in psalm 82 he said the whole earth is out of course and things are out of alignment but originally 
you were supposed to be the image or are the image of the most high. We are just now at a lower state. That's the true identity first is understanding that you were made in the image of the father. So when we see these other images that are being portrayed, whether it be in media, through music, and there's certain agendas being pushed, there's certain narratives being pushed. They're trying to what? Bring perversion to a whole nother level so that it can what? Do what? Bear more fruit because that's the way the most high created this environment. Whatever you speak, whatever you do multiplies. So, so listening, uh, while you were talking, there's, um, in Ephesians 5, starting from verse 3, you know, in one translation, it says that it says, don't let sexual sin, perversion of any kind or greed even be mentioned among you. This is not appropriate behavior for God's holy people. But then in the King James Version, they, they uh, the other word they use is uncleanliness for perversion, covetousness, let it not be named among you as becometh of saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting. Remember, we used, to t- we used to read these verses a lot when we were kids, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no whoremonger, no unclean person, nor covetous man, no idol- who is an adulterer, hath any inheritance in the kingdom. So, but verse six is critical, what you just said about media, what they push. But let no man deceive you with vain words. Because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Mm. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now ye are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. So, as you said, the what is the media? What is what what, what are what are the voices and what is being amplified out there? Because that is what's causing us as a people to fall into the state of abnormality or we can call it perversion or in a state or realm where we are outside of the original intent of who we are as a people which makes perfect sense as to why there's a lot of discord and there's a lot of chaos when we start talking about identity because what is the baseline for the identity amongst people especially when you're your mind is in an altered state where you just see confusion around you. So what you see to be normal, you think this is the way you are. What do they say? Let's just keep it a buck. Let's just keep it a hundred. Be you. Do you. What does that mean? Do you. So what you're, you're what you're doing is succumbing to and you're um, you're putting yourself in this this volatile state where you think that this level of confusion is where I am and this is who I am. This one be when in actuality this is far from it, far from the original intent. As we can see throughout, we, we we don't need to name certain movements and groups, but you can see the amplification of what's going on in, in what you always wonderfully depict, the television, because they're telling you the vision, what you need to see and what you need to think and what you need to be. And this has become what people identify with now. So now people identify with things outside of themselves as them being who they are. Oh, I'm this. Oh, I'm that. No, no, who are you? No, I'm that. They start to claw. I'm a Christian. Oh, I go to this church. Like, no, no, tell me who you are. No, you're going to tell me about something that's external to you. And that's a part of the confusion. So I'm, I'm glad you pointed that out because a lot of what people think, do, and believe is things that vain people or deceivers have brought to your awareness and you have, you have accepted it, you have cleaved hold to it, and now it's become your reality. And the the prince of darkness is already set for judgment so if you know you're already set for judgment and you were made in a way that understand human nature you can coax hoax convince a lot of people to follow your way because it will seem right it said there's a mm-hmm. way that seems right. right to a man yeah because yep. it's the mm-hmm. see you're up it's the appearance what is she? She saw that it was good. So they know the power of imaging the eye gate, the ear gate, the smell, all those senses are how we mm-hmm. operate in this particular realm. Once you lost your senses or your sense of smell, sight, taste, all those different things, you have cut off a certain dimension of your being in this particular realm. And because fallen mm-hmm. angels, as we call them, or unclean spirits, 
um, demonic powers, which are all different classifications and tiers and, and systems of how they operate, just like the Most High operates through certain ways. And we see in the scriptures like you were reading in Ephesians, which was a letter that Paul was writing to a group of firstborn people that were in the city called Ephesus, which is in the Roman or the Greco-Roman Empire. So let's try to put a time frame to it as best as possible so we can get somewhat of a context without being too exact. They say the Christ, our king, came around 33 to 37 AD. Now we're in 2024 AD, right? So Paul is writing around 60, 70, I think somewhere around there. I would have to double check that. But he's writing several years after the Messiah had come to reconcile the firstborn back to the creator. Because that's what that's the relationship that has been broken. It's about a group of people that the Most High is interfacing with. It is not universal. That's what the Catholicism means, universal. So Catholicism birthed all the other religions. And the unfortunate part is most people don't care about none of the stuff anyway. Like you share this information and it gets too heavy or you're taking too long. They on to the next one because the stronghold is, is so pervasive throughout different parts of the society and it comes in at such a rapid speed through the phone, through all these different avenues. It's hard for the truth. Didn't they say that Amos said there will be a famine of the truth or the word? That's a part of it. The famine is people don't have a time to see that because they've been sowing so much wickedness or so much perversion, as we said, or so much idleness that it has bountiful fruit of that type of lifestyle that's been sown in the fabric of this particular society that we call the United States. How was the United States started? It started with taking people's land, da, 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 da. All those different things was the foundation of this society. So if you build into that type of foundation and then you bring perversion on top of it, you, what type of tomatoes you finna get? What type of produce will come from that? Satan understood that. Mm -hmm. That's why he makes everything idolatrous because he wants to be God and he makes everyone what? As we said in a previous podcast, a star. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to be a what? A star. Thanks. But every star mm -hmm. we see falls. Mm -hmm. Name one star that don't fall. Mm -hmm. In the media today, it's one person, whether it's sexual trafficking or it's abuse or whatever that situation is, name one star that has made it or a celebrity that has made it that has not fallen so satan don't like them either that's what they don't get and all those people who follow him or who have his seed line are set for destruction already so some of these agendas are set for destruction so if the most high says hey i've i want you to be fruitful and multiply and then there's other agenda that said no you don't be fruitful and multiply do this what do we get what how do we look at that that's why i say as children you are supposed to be little most highs or little gods on the earth that represent him so if 50 people remember when um abram was fighting with sodom and gomorrah and he said he was interceding he said if there were just 50 all the way down to five he said if there's just a reflection of my glory uh inkling a mustard seed of my glory there it can't be touched so imagine now in the americas or even in the garden all over the world because the perversion is everywhere if there are few righteous in there, Satan can't penetrate and the Most High won't fully destroy. But he's saying now, come out from among them because I am coming to reset the order or it's already set. Meaning like I don't have to say it because I already spoke it in the beginning. So it's already running its course. And based on the time frames of the iniquities of others, the perversions of others, that time frame of it being a cyclical reaction throughout generations are coming to a certain end because the most high has already set that in order he's saying get and get back to where you need to be just as we see in the days of noah noah was going to have a new earth most high is always replenishing even at the beginning the earth was without form and void and the most high said let there be that's the new earth moshe go to the wilderness come out from among egypt and i'm going to do a new thing question to ask yourself how many continents are there? According to what we've been taught, seven, mm -hmm. right? But how do we know for sure that that's true? Mm -hmm. 
You know there's islands in Ghana? Islands all over the place I've seen. So there, it's safe to say that there are other pieces of land that we don't know about. Oh, for sure. Right? 100%. Planets, so many different things. So the seven continents that we've been told, what if there's 20 continents? And what if people live on those continents and we're just not aware of it in the public? Now, oh, that's conspiracy. It's a valid question. So if that being so, if the Savior said, I go to prepare a pace for you, that where I am, you will be with me and that I will make a new heaven and a new earth. And that the angel was moving his sword and blocked out portions of the earth that we can't touch because of the sacredness of that area. What if the Most High is preparing us to go into those spaces, just like the explorers did? Didn't they teach us that explorers left their European Caucasian lands and then just traveled not knowing mm -hmm. and then came up on lands and was describing it? Just like John the Revelator was describing what he saw on the island of Patmos in the spirit. You know, what if these were, <laughs> you see, you see human beings can't go into space. <laughs> Unless, but they're telling us they're going to the moon. But how do we know if it's even true? Unless you have uh, extra uh, specific science, scientifically uh, formulated attire and air to breathe. You, as soon as you cross atmospheric pressure, you're done. Can't even touch it. <laughs> so most of the stuff we've been told, the television, as you said earlier, it's been agreed upon by one group of people who's running all of the different systems and said that this is what it is that's what it is that they tell you it is that doesn't mean necessarily that's what it is according to the ways of the most high and if satan is a liar and his children are liars or we have a system that's built on lies how do we know so with that being said, it doesn't mean we walk around in fear, but we begin to get back into trusting the most high and getting back to our identity so that we can get back in alignment to that God state status. So hold on. So, so, in so our I'm asking being. this question because that was going to be my next question right there because every person that you listed and you named that whether it's a command or a message, the question is how did they receive? How did they know? the words mm. because first john talks about testing the spirit right knowing mm. it says beloved believe not every spirit but try the spirits where they have god because many false prophets are gone into the world so i would like for you mm. to decode and touch on exactly what is the message or the direction of god how do you know because that's something i know a lot of people struggle with is it my own mind my own conscience or is this mm. the way the lord speaks to me in this voice in this manner and this is the mode of communication because every single person on the planet a lot of people who are very aware i believe that's the only way you can come into an alignment to have that full trust and that full belief that you know ah mm, based on what i know based on my spirit but i sense this is this something that's off here but if you can touch on that point that would be that would be very very, yeah. very beneficial for our, our guests yeah so for me i go to the parameters and the boundaries that scriptures have provided for us. Now, we understand that a lot of it has been reused, manufactured, uh, tampered with, all, all kinds of things have happened to the scriptures, but the base of it is strong. And that's where the Most High dwells. How do you know what part of the word is true? I run it through several metrics. One, is it congruent with the messaging? Can you get a witness? from other scriptures, other biblical texts that mm -hmm. confirm a certain thing. It can't just be like one little verse because you can make the Bible say anything in that regard, right? So you find a continuity of messaging from old, as they call it, to the new, as they call it, right? So you see a continuity there. Okay, that's one metric. The next metric is how does that play in the face of human nature in my personal experience? That's another metric. The second, the third metric is how does that play in what we've noticed in history that has been recorded outside of scripture. And then the fourth one would be nature. What does nature reveal? What does nature suggest? And what does nature confirm? So once you run through those different metrics, then you have at least a close inkling towards this is coming from the creator because it finds itself true or it's substantial enough to stand through all those different metrics. Because the scripture says what? They that worship the most high must worship him in spirit and in truth. So your spirit is going to be where the most high um, communicates. And that is a, a lifestyle that you have to cultivate. 
what we call meditation, prayer, fasting, all these different things that come into seeking. He said, if you seek me, you will what? Find me. So there's no real formula to it, but there are some parameters that have been set to get us into a place where we can get into his presence. And if you're sincerely seeking the most high, trying to find your way back to him, he will take you through that journey. He took me through that journey. I was in one stead. I was raised, um, I guess, pagan or non-religious, then ended up going into the church, extremely churchified into religious um, doctrine and so forth and so on. Went to school for it, learned, experienced life, saw the contradictions, stepped away, then found the truth again in my atmosphere and then was able to realize at this point in my life, oh wow, these are the truths that I see to be evident through those metrics that I stated earlier that help me discern what is from the most high and what's not. And then as I continue to cultivate that relationship, I'm beginning to pick up his person, his his ways of being, because I'm involving myself in nature. I'm involving myself with community. I'm involving myself in the scriptures. I'm studying. I'm seeking. I'm following the feast days and the commandments because they told us not to, but I realized that the most high doesn't change. So why would he say all these things for all this time and all of a sudden say, no, that's gone as this because of this. And it wasn't aligning itself. And, and we can go into those details at another time because it's very complicated. But for just a listener coming on, seek the father in spirit and in truth. If you're sincerely wanting to know the creator, he knows if you're trying to reach him, he will show himself to you in little ways. And you'll become to, you'll begin to create that awareness. It's just like, if you go into someone's home, I was at a client's house the other day and we were talking about this same subject. And I said, everything is about your consciousness, your awareness of any particular reality. So we were in the house and I said, just think about the house we're in right now. Look how much pink is in this house. And then we started looking around the house and they had pink everywhere. But before that, I didn't even see it. They didn't even see it. They forgot that they put it up. It was left over like stuff from Valentine's Day or something like that. But now that you have spoken it, and you brought awareness to it, there it is. So the same thing with the Most High. He's he's with us. We're breathing right now. His spirit was formed in all. He breathed the breath of life in all of his children and then gave a breath of life to all of creation. So we know that to be true, that the Most High is in us and it gives us life. That's the first level of awareness or consciousness that a person needs to start with. And then you begin to step into what you have been taught to be the religious form, whether it's church, whether it's the mosque, whether it's the temple or the synagogue, whatever the, the different avenue is, and then doing the research, finding the truth, trying to look for the truth. Oh, you know what? That doesn't make sense. His name is Jesus, but that's interesting because Jesus is a Latin name. And when you go down here on, in North Hollywood and I say, Jesus, there's a bunch of people with the name Jesus. So is that, was that his name or was that a part of the translation from the Latin people mm -hmm. and the Greeks? Hmm. If you're seeking the most high, you, if you're sincerely seeking, I'm going to go check it out and see like, okay, is this, is this what I'm supposed to be calling him? What if I'm calling him something that I'm not, who, what if I'm calling on another deity? These types of questions, if the creator is the creator, he wouldn't be offended by you trying to seek him and questioning things from a sincere standpoint and trying to understand and know. But if you automatically not, nah, and you don't think it's important, that's because mo in most cases it's a stronghold and you don't, the devil doesn't want you to go looking because he likes the way he keeps you there so that when the judgments come, you won't be able to discern where the most high is on certain things because you're on the wrong side, wrong place, wrong time. So that's why we're encouraging people out of Ashan in this season, just like Noah, no one was listening to Noah. No one listens to the truth till it's too late and you don't have to do it that way. We can seek the most high, get to understand him where we are, no matter where you are in your captivity, you can understand, hey man, we're not where we're supposed to be, especially people for the firstborn, us. We don't rule ourselves anywhere. Where in the earth do we have peace? That doesn't, that, that doesn't the bother whole the, whole, the whole world. But when you read that from the scriptural standpoint, like we read earlier in Psalm 82, or you read in Ephesians or anywhere else, he's talking to a group of people that's always in this state of brokenness because of their inability to know who they are 
the rejection of who they are, the trickery of how they got there, all those different things. And it fits Afro peoples more so than any other group of people on earth from Genesis chapter two all the way down. You see this stuff happening on the continent and you see that they've been dispersed throughout the nations, so forth and so on. So you have to ask yourself, okay, I know what they told me are the people. I know who they say are the chosen ones or who are the most highest representatives. Let's look at it from a geological standpoint, okay, or from a genetical standpoint. Once you start going through the different metrics, it helps to break illusions, right? And then you can really begin to say, all right, <laughs> there might be a copyright infringement on this particular subject. So Father, help me to understand who I am. Because he's the only one who can, the, the one who created you is the only one who can actually tell you who you are. Well, that's so true. So, you know, that, that brings up the story of Jonah. Mm. You ask yourself, when we, when we hear about Jonah and we hear about him being swallowed up in the belly of the whale, how did he even get there? Because once the mission, the message had gone forth, the commandment had gone forth to him, and he decided to reject that and go his own way, everything he touched was chaotic. Could it be that this world is in chaos because the messengers refuse to obey or refuse to walk in the precepts of what it was intended? So now if we talk about perversion, how perversion says that it, you're basically out of course, out of its original intent. Now, this now we see when the the scriptures talk about a perverse generation, <laughs> a generation that can't be recognized. Mm. Why? There you go. So, could it, this, so are we the Jonas that are we sitting in this whale, this behemoth society that we live in, and the constant degradation of what we see mm. is because the people of God have not, not once even taken their place, haven't even begun to fit together on a minuscule level of where and who and what they're supposed to be on this earth. Because a lot of the things, even when I look at, when you you sit back, you know, you just listen and you just look at life for what it is and you, you just you just meditate and you see that there's just too much confusion. How do we get here? Because the peace, when we talk about perfect peace, I, I, not too many people have experienced peace. I think that's why we often joke and say, mm. peace comes when you die. That Because while on earth is so many distractions, there's so many things that are pulling you here, pulling you there, telling you to do this, telling you to do that, telling you to do that. And then you, you get bombarded that it, even as the scriptures say, be, be, be very careful of what you let in. Be care, very careful of vain words. Be very careful of who you allow to prophesy and to tell you. But, but test it. Test the spirit because the spirit within you is going to mm. tell you and lead you in the right direction. But you have to understand what that voice is. Just like a young baby in the womb, they say that they can hear the vibrations of their mothers or their fathers or even people on the outside reverberating through even when they're in the belly. So you can imagine just like an animal kingdom, whether it's a bird, whether it's a cheetah, the animals can can dispel or to put out signals and their offspring recognize their voice. Just like the shepherd and the sheep, they recognize the voice. Are we and why are we not recognizing the voice? of the most high that tells us how far off out of whack we are i don't even care if we are at the highest level in the the oligarchs in the religious circles many of them still don't hear the voice because you can tell by the fruits there's something that's off somewhere there's something that's missing and because of that and i think we're in a critical place in history because as we even before we, you know we were doing our run-throughs it was like could we even imagine could we have even predicted what 2024 was going to look like back in 2000 because even in 2000 mm. we're saying man the world's getting bad it's going to be this man it's coming to an end in about two three years now 20 plus years later we're looking at like whoa look at the norm now look at what we see we, 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 there's nothing that's res absolute anymore everything is a question mark from human existence to actually human beings in front of you to, I don't even mention certain things that would get us X in, in, in the social media and the YouTube sphere, but you know, you know what I'm talking about. There's certain things just not absolute. You have to ask questions in order to determine is this real or not real. So, and this is 2024. So, one thing I hold fast to, and it's not because we're scared; it's because y'all run the systems and we can't say what we want to say. It. Bama's not scared of nothing, but we can't say it the way we want to say it because y'all Bama's is weak and we still trying to reach the people. Right. But, but you know, you know, the, the thing is, is like, I mean, going forward, whether we, when, you know, engaging with young folks, kids, even adults, I think a lot of people are in a state of confusion mm -hmm. and we have to bring the order back. 
But as you said, the only way to bring the order back is you have to get in that perfect space and that perfect alignment, meaning you have to start to avail yourself back to your creator. And nature shows you because you can see it. The grass is still growing. We can see skies. We can see the sun. We are perfectly placed. That tells you there's something that is greater than us that exists. And you have to respect it because if you don't, you will be destroyed. And everything around you is looking to destroy you. So you have to create that peace. Meaning, there's certain things you need to let go. There's certain things you need to mm-hmm. let go in your life, in mm-hmm. your mind. There's certain things that you've been holding on to, for whatever reason it is, that are just weighing you down. Mm-hmm. And, you're, and because it's weighing you down, it is, it's, it's literally causing you to, to break down. You can't maneuver. You can't be the most optimal form of you who you need to be. Therefore, you can't even see who you are. You can't even see where your strengths come from. We haven't even, we say it all the time, we we haven't even hit the like t- the, ice, the tip of the iceberg into what your potential could be because you're looking at a broken lens and you just can't see your reflection properly. You just can't see it. People mm. around you can see it, but until you see it for yourself, it's just not going to work. But you have to want to. You have to want to. You have to have the desire to. You have to, like you said, seek. Mm-hmm. Seek who? Seek him. Your, his face. Seek your creator's face. Def, and, and ask that they show you that he shows you the way that he shows you the and it be, mm-hmm. as it's baby steps you'll begin to like you know we have we, we used to talk uh when we talk about you know digesting uh hard truths you just got to take you sometimes you got to drink milk first you gotta you gotta crawl before you walk but it's the lifestyle it's the little things here and there and it begins to build you up you know and and, and, and that's what we definitely need to encourage our people to do because I always tell our students is n- there's never a dumb question the only dumb question is a question that's not asked we grew up in places in religious circles where you ask questions that was a sign of disrespect we grew up in households where kids didn't <laughs> ask grown ups questions even when I realized they didn't have the answers so it, it's a form where if I don't have the answer oh sit down boy what do you ask what, what are you talking about no no it's a valid question that needs a valid response <laughs> so it's easier to say i don't know and let's find out rather than just shoot it down mm-hmm. you know so that, that's just something you know yeah and i think that's key you said there is like let's let's journey together he said come let us reason together though our sins be as scarlet they can become whiter as snow but people are afraid of going in the most high's presence because they've been they've associated with religion that means you can't have fun you can't do this or you can't do that or i'm going to be confronted with myself and knowing myself it's easier to submit to the flow of the broad right of everybody who's doing it mm-hmm. everybody's doing that like you see people with these certain certain slippers on and these different this and everybody's doing whatever is trendy it's easy through marketing to manipulate people to become a, a part of the the so-called or the the whoever's in but crowd mm-hmm. it, the in crowd but the in crowd always leaves you with nothing at the end of the day and then when you get exposed where are all your friends at these people, the celebrities now who are being called out for whatever reasons. Idolatry. Where are their friends to stand up for them? They weren't there from the beginning. <laughs> Idolatry is never there. That's the illusion. Satan is a master illusionist. And he gets people to make you think that you are on top of the world. What did he try to hit our savior with? This kingdom has been given to me from your peoples, from Adam. You're the second one. I'm going to try to get you too. And he went, he said, no, I serve the most high only. And he had to isolate. People don't want to be isolated. People want to be, you know, because we're social beings, we want to be with other people. But Jonah, Moshe, Moses, the Savior, Mesendesi, Yeshua, whatever terms y'all want to use, at one point or another in their life, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Isaiah, isolation, Jonah, isolate. And you know what's critical about that? You know, they say, so a man thinking, so is he, right? Mm-hmm. What you find is, and this is one thing I, I realized when I was growing up. We would look, we hear Satan, the enemy, evil. We think it's almost like a somebody taking control of you and forcing you to do things that is contrary or out of your will. No, all it takes is a seed. It's a seed mm-hmm. of doubt. Once you grab onto that seed, boom, you be, that is festered in your mind and it begins to grow within yourself. There's nothing the enemy else needs to do. Their job is done. The wickedness is done. Now it's you cultivating and watering that seed and it's growing and it's growing and it's growing and it turns into something else. So this is why when you talk about when uh, the savior was being tempted, if he would have given in to, oh, you're okay. Yeah, you know, I agree. Boom, it's done. 
the enemy didn't have to come in to do these things almost like a puppet. Nah, it's just it's the seed that's been planted. Once mm-hmm. you give in, it's over. Mm-hmm. And that's the easiest way for people to fall. So as you mentioned, what's the easiest way to get people to fall now? Amplify through these people we call celebrities. I don't even know why people even care. Why we even pedestalize? Because once again, so now it makes sense when we <laughs> when we think about idols. Because we think. When we read the scriptures, we think the idol is a statue, the graven image. Nah, it's these people that you see, that you follow, that you scroll all day. That you're... I love him. He's my idol. You go to a concert, you're fainting. Oh my gosh, because I saw he... they walk by me like, what? <laughs> these are the idols. <laughs> and, the, and people live through it and they become obsessed with it. And they don't even realize that the this is who you're actually worshiping. You're worshiping stardom. You're worshiping this. You're worshiping that. People can't function without likes. They can't function. If they, my daughter, one time she put a post on, and I remember her and her sister were talking, like, man, we had 200 views. Oh my gosh, 250. And they're just like being enamored because it's like people are watching, or people, someone's paying attention, and they're looking like an hour later. How many hours has it been? Okay, yeah, about, we should get about a thousand. <laughs> you become obsessed with the stardom and the fame. Life is crucial. Life is crucial. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but that, but who, who's the author confusion. of confusion? Who loves that? He loves that because ultimately the power, like we, like you said earlier, with the the idol. I mean, on, on the mountain when he was tempting, that's Luke chapter four, tempting the Savior, and that happened before the power of the unction from the Most High came upon the Messendency or upon the Savior um, when he came out of that wilderness experience, full where of power. Satan was tempting him, but well, Satan had to tempt him like he does us. And us as leaders, that's why the Most High is calling us into a time of consecration for the people. Are we willing to, for our generation in this perverse generation, are we willing to be the watchmen on the wall and stand in the gap for the people so that we can give the clarion call to what is happening and what the Most High is doing in the earth? He always speaks through humans, just like Satan or any other entities that are spirit beings speak into this realm or impacts this realm affects this realm spills over into this realm through human action like you said seed so if we create an environment that is built towards the worship of man or worship of things or materialism or whatever it may be and we put a seed in that type of ground and you are not aware of it or not conscious of what is happening you're automatically by default going to be worshiping idols going to be falling falling in contrariness and opposition to the creator or nature or the most high and what happens when we go against nature what is nature kicking back at us what they now call in political ways what global warming the environment is toxic da, 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 all these different things then what the people become toxic because the mind is toxic so when we're talking about oh people are toxic these toxic relationship we use all of these catchphrases but all of those are silos to harness energy harvest energy to then shift it back out to people at high volumes voltage 200 people 3,000 people are watching sick that's the energy harvesting so you're like pump the 808 (laughs) so let's give them resources Satan's like yeah now you're then you become one with it once you become one with it, now you're not only suppressed, oppressed, possessed, depressed, all those different classifications. Now it becomes where you're obsessed by those things. You're possessed. You're controlled by these ops, these spiritual ops. Like my boy said, we need to be aware of the spiritual environment. We're aware of when we walk in the room and read the room and know this or when we walk in the club, we see who we going to go for or whatever it may be. Do you walk into a space and understand the spiritual environment of a city? Mm, there you go. Oh, hold on. We in Los Angeles. Hmm, what happened here? Oh, this used to be Mexico. Dang. Hold on. This is where the gold rush is. Oh, that's why so much popularity and resources here. Hmm. Hollow. What is Hollywood? Dang, that Jones like magicianry. Oh, that's why they call this. Oh. So now you're walking in overstanding. That's where your power, my power is. Weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're mighty through the most high to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down, casting down, destroying imagination so you say how do we get out of this you have to feed on the truth and begin to think 
as a man thinketh, so is he. Think what did the Most High say about you? So we go back to the scripture. Who did the Most High say? He said, I was made in his image. He says, I have authority over all unclean spirit. He said, I'm the head and not the tail. How do I become the head and not the tail? Because I don't feel that way. I don't walk that way. I don't see no one walking in headship. I don't see no leaders running their own stuff without having to get a check from another company or getting a check from another this. Or how come we're not doing anything? When you begin to ask those questions, what is happening now? You're, you're opening up the airways. You're dealing with the principalities and powers. And that's when the angel came to Daniel and said, from the first day you prayed, the answer was on its way. But because of the, the, the influx of generations of wickedness and had been placed in, in, in order, those strongholds were so strong, I couldn't get to you in time. But the reason that you fasted, you kept seeking the Most High, the Most High superseded all of those strongholds. And now I dropped the message to you. Plus, I'm going to tell you what's about to happen so you can prepare and tell the others and leave it for my children who's going to come from your loins who are going to be in the latter times, which is i.e. me and you. And that makes perfect logical sense because look at us as the firstborn and our genetics, which is different from everyone else on the earth. Look at our land that is feeding the, the resources for all the wealthy nations is still coming from that particular land. So looking at it from the most highs lands, I know that that's us. They're speaking of in the scripture doesn't mean he's not going to touch or hasn't created other nations and other people. But he's called us to do certain things that only we are supposed to do that are a contribution to the earth. Just like bees do what they do, other creation do what they do. No one can be get mad at the bees because the bees are the only ones who can produce honey. Oh, you, you you think you're better than me because you can produce honey? No, I just can't produce honey because that's what I'm called that's to do. That's the film. function. Just like, what, what are you here for? Logically, what are you here for? Well, and remember the matrix. Not just, oh, I'm here to be a blessing and to be a lawyer and to be a this. Really? That's why you're here? To carry out another human being's laws. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. But because we think that way, that's why we're stuck in these low vibrational ceilings where we can't find autonomy to explore as we said earlier for the new heavens and the new earth whether it's a consciousness or in physical location you know a, a lot of it has to do you know they use the term uh products of the environment because in its most simplistic form everything that we do we can actually say why do we do it but we do it because obviously you think that's what you need to do you've been taught it there's i i um, ideals that have been baked into you but there are times where you just sit back like it I don't if I when you read the scriptures about the garden of Eden they just communed they walked that meaning they just existed on the on the simplest of levels God just wants you to exist with him that's it everything else mm -hmm. is a distraction right. everything that's else it, is period. what as you just mentioned is what is the the wall or the partition or the the segmentation that is causing that rift and that divide everything because regardless because you you mentioned you you said something that was really interesting you said that about leaders and you talked about being a leader and who the leaders are and, you know this is a debate i used to have in college with some of my i can call it unbelieving friends because what they used to do was when you start to talk about principles and standards by which we should be living by the pushback was why ain't no pastor why well, i'm not proclaiming to be this or to lead people to do that and i used to tell them that regardless of what you think you are you still mm. are going to be held accountable for that because you are a son and daughter of the creator period you can't run away from that so even if you say i don't believe in this mm -hmm. right there's still a war going on so just as you being a father you being a leader of your household, if the enemy comes to your front door, I don't care what your personality is, you have to take arms or you're going to, or you will be succumbed. So regardless of, you know, we used to joke, you know, that movie when Debo was telling Craig, you better get involved. <laughs> He's not like, trying to get involved in that Craig, you better get involved. You have to get involved. Or you, you going to get, get involved, involved or I'm going to knock your ass out. Your mere, exist yeah, Pick a choice. your mere existence in this fallen world requires you to be vigilant or like you said a watchman because it's just too much going on it's too much going on that are bombarding your kids that are bombarding you so everywhere you turn you got to see the elements and understand what's going on in this world and then you have to make a conscious decision to go left straight right sit still but it also comes back to 
Where's your baseline? Where's your strength coming from? Mm -hmm. Where are you getting your orders? Mm -hmm. Where are you getting your direction? We chose to get our direction mm -hmm. from the scriptures because for us, it bears witness with our spirits. Like, mm. We tested the spirit. This ain't it. Can't follow it. And even as in our as we're 45 now, we can give you examples of teenagers where we've literally utilized this formula and has worked every time. <laughs> because now in revisionist history, you sit by like, see, we told y'all. See, we did, remember we saw something was a little fishy over there. But once again, what does the scripture say? Broad is the way that leads to destruction. So when we talk about it, well, everybody's going there. Okay, go right ahead. Usually when everyone goes, usually it doesn't turn out well. Usually. Yeah. We don't we follow, don't follow where those. everybody else is. And that's Bama. Anything. That's what we call Bama for those who are not from D.C. Yeah. If you're from Alabama or D.C., you know <laughs> what a Bama is. <laughs> we don't, you don't right. follow everybody. Exactly. And no disrespect <laughs> to the Alabamans. <laughs> Yes, that's it that's it but you know but you know but that but that yes, piece you know as the scripture say that peace of god you know that's what we need to seek and that's what we need to strive for peace peace with nature and harmony with one another and this is why and this is another thing but walking in love and dispelling a lot of the chaotic and evil that's in the world you have to understand that the peace of god is what you're looking for because if you rest and abide in the bosom of the Almighty. Trust and believe there's nothing mm. out there that can touch you. There's nothing out there that can distract. There's nothing out there that can get in your mental to knock you off. This is why we have a lot of the things we have going on. Mental health, a lot of, once again, author of confusion. Now mess with the minds and, and, and how people see themselves and how people interact with loved ones and people that they know, that they say that they're close with. And this is what we just have to simplify our lives. But the simplification comes with Going back to the root, going back to the beginning of where it all began, starting from there, just taking baby steps and moving forward because we're finite people. We are going to expire. But the journey, this is that's true. everlasting. Once we leave mm -hmm. and our spirit, man, it, is spirit forever. Forever. this little physical, that's it. it it's it's going to be done and gone. But while you're here, maximize it. And, and that's where the beauty of life comes in, because every time we travel, Especially when we go to the garden, you get to experience nature in ways that you haven't seen before because we're used to, as we call this, the concrete jungle. We all this development that you, you lose sight of what the earth, the earth really looks like, like to see just a horizon of trees and animals. But we sit here and we look at those things as things like we're looking in the zoo or we're looking at some type of science fair project when in actuality we are the science fair project. <laughs> we're in this matrix of confusion and people don't know which which way to turn but we need to slow down we need we need to slow down and and um realign and as as you mentioned many many times get back get back to know who your creator is get back to know the truth yes, have a man. desire to know truth because yes, once you unlock that and understand that then you can be of asset and you can be definitely that pivotal piece in helping not just yourself, but your community and those in your circle um, of influence. 100%. And I, we're going to try with all of our heart to continue to be the, the watchman on the wall, the watchmen on the wall to express the consciousness of the most high through the things that we do. And we hope that through this, the, the chosen, the ones that the most high has set aside for himself the remnant will be able to get the message mm -hmm. and it's happening all over the world through different means and we see a beautiful thing happening that the most high is waking up his people but be careful and mindful of the distractions and the lies that come by the enemy that will per give you the perception of being from the most high but it's just another trap to have us worshiping idols so at the end of the day we want to look at the fruit look at the long the, the track record and does it align with these metrics and then trusting your own intuition your spirit because if you're seeking the most high sincerely and even though we're human and we have our brokenness that has been passed down to us that we received unknowingly knowingly there's so many different avenues to how bondage and um, distractions come in but the most high will help us get through it we're moving as a community feel free to reach out to us we'll be coming to you with many more different avenues to try to reach as many people as we can Till next time, peace.